From phrases dripping with emotion to trinkets imbued with deep meaning, there are plenty of seemingly small things with big implications in the second part of The Witcher Season 3. The world of The Witcher features many different groups, all with their own unique history, cultures, and allegiances, so audiences could be forgiven for sometimes having difficulty tracking them all. One of the groups that have risen to prominence in Season 3 is the Scoia'tael Army, a group of elven fighters led at least at first by the warrior Galatin, played by series newcomer Robbie Amell. The Scoia'tael work alongside Francesca Finderbear, the Queen of the Elves, though her obsession with capturing Ciri puts Francesca at odds with Galatin. While this army of skilled warriors officially goes by the name Scoia'tael, viewers might notice that they are often referred to as Skrulls. The nickname might seem strange at first, but its meaning comes from the Witcher novels, particularly Blood of Elves. In the novels, the Scoia'tael are a group of fighters consisting primarily of elves, with some dwarves and halflings who aim to ensure freedom and safety in the Northern Kingdoms for all non-human races. The word Scoia'tael translates to squirrel in elder speech, a name they were given for their tendency to wear squirrel tails on their hats. The sixth episode of the third season is packed with shocking moments bound to leave fans gasping. One such moment takes place after Nilfgaardian troops manage to sneak themselves into Aratusa and begin attacking the mages who were there for the Conclave. The mages refuse to go down without a fight, though. Several of them, including Tesea and Dotorius, erect a magical barrier to halt an onslaught of arrows coming in their direction. Unfortunately, the move does nothing to slow the arrows, which pierce right through the magical wall and kill several mages, including Artorius. Tesea is quick to note that the arrows were tipped with Dimeritium. In the universe of The Witcher, that's a unique type of metal known to suppress magical abilities. Since the arrowheads are coated with Dimeritium, they're able to pass through the magical barrier with ease, even though that same barrier can stop most other materials. This scene actually isn't even the first time Dimeritium is used in the episode. Earlier, Sigismund Dijkstra, the Redanian spymaster, uses handcuffs made of Dimeritium to hold Vilgefortz and his followers captive. Gamers may also recognize a fictional metal from the video game The Witcher 3, where the ore is a collectible crafting material used to make special gear. The wizard Stregobor wasn't exactly a sympathetic character throughout his three-season run on The Witcher. He was greedy, manipulative, and had a deep-seated hatred towards elves and students with elven blood. But in his final moments, he willingly sacrifices himself, using the all-consuming fire magic to help protect the mages of Oratusa by destroying a large force of elven and Nilfgaardian invaders. Its final words to the elven invaders, Falcon will be waiting for you. Not only highlight the character's long-standing prejudice towards elves, but also hint at the important role that Falcon will play in the final two episodes of the season. Following the events of the battle, Ciri begins to see a hooded figure who both taunts her and gives her advice on surviving. Viewers of The Witcher Blood Origin might immediately recognize her voice as that of Falca, a revolutionary with elven blood. Known for her violent nature, Stregobor actually fought during Falca's rebellion and ended up losing both of his hands, using illusions to make it appear as if he still had them. The line also ties back to Stregobor's history of obsessing over curses. Falca was famous for the curse she placed on those that killed her, so it makes sense that she would be a fixation of Stregobor, who also had a fascination with the famous curse of the Black Sun. The seventh episode of the season is unique in that it focuses almost entirely on Ciri, with only brief glimpses of Geralt of Rivia. The episode picks up in the aftermath of the Battle of Thaned, which ended with Ciri destroying Torlara, also known as the Tower of the Girl, and being sent through the portal inside. Unfortunately for Ciri, the unstable portal teleports her into the sky over an arid stretch of inhospitable desert. A student of geography, Ciri notes that Malsak used to refer to this place as the Frying Pan. In the universe of The Witcher, the Frying Pan is a nickname given to the Korath Desert, a large sea of arid sand dunes with few living inhabitants. The Korath Desert is far to the south of the Northern Kingdoms, where the majority of the story of The Witcher takes place. It also lies to the east of Nilfgaard, the kingdom under the rule of Ciri's father, Emir. While Nilfgaard has no control over the neighboring desert, it is still the closest geographically that Ciri has been to her father's kingdom in all three seasons. It's no secret that Yaskier is a fan-favorite character, and his interactions with his fellow leads are among the funniest in the show. After spending time bonding with Geralt in Season 1 and Yennefer in Season 2, the third season of The Witcher finally gives Yaskier some valuable time with Ciri, building the relationship between the two. This leads to several comedic scenes, including a particular standout in the fourth episode. While Geralt and Yennefer speak alone, Ciri and Yaskier watch from the bushes nearby and to make up their own dialogue for the conversation. When Geralt and Yennefer finally kiss, Yaskia jokes, Is there a unicorn nearby, by any chance? 
At first, his quip appears just to be Yasuki's sense of humor, but it's actually the show's clever way of subtly foreshadowing an important character that Siri meets later in the season. After being teleported to the Korath Desert, Siri is alone and forced to survive with only what she has on her. Luckily, she happens across a nearby unicorn, whom she nicknames Little Horse. The two help each other survive, and she even rescues him from a sand monster. After Little Horse is poisoned, she heals him by tapping into fire magic. The unicorn becomes afraid of her and runs away, leaving Siri alone once again. During his climactic fight with Vilgefort, Geralt is grievously injured and near death. His back is broken by the traitorous mage, leaving him unable to walk. Luckily, Geralt is brought to Broccolon Forest, the home of the Dryads, which viewers may remember from the show's first season. While Geralt is brought inside as a friend to the Dryads, access to the forest is forbidden to most outsiders. This becomes an issue when Yaskia comes to the forest, hoping to see Geralt. He's denied entry, but the tricky bard has an idea that will help the Dryads see that he's a friend. He begins to sing a beautiful song in Elder Speech that the Dryads call Enchanted Flowers. Readers of the Witcher books might recognize this song by another name, Elaine Etariel, an elven ballad that appears in Time of Contempt, the novel that is the basis for Season 3. The ballad tells the story of an elven heroine named Etariel, who gives the writer of the song a beautiful and enchanted flower after they fall deeply in love with her. In the book, Elaine Etariel translates to Etariel the Beautiful, rather than Enchanted Flowers. Players of the first Witcher video game may also recognize a song from the remix version in the game's fourth chapter. Geralt may be the only familiar face that Yaskia sees after entering Broccolon Forest, but viewers will recognize another character, Ciri's elven friend Dara. After parting way to Ciri, Dara becomes a spy for Dijkstra and Philippa Eilhart. He initially joins Francesca's elves to gain information, but then chooses to really support their cause. After Scoia'tael decides to side with the White Flame, Dara makes his way to Broccolin Forest with several other refugees, ultimately deciding to stay with the Dryads to avoid future violence. This isn't the first time that Dara has been to Broccolin Forest. In Season 1, he and Ciri find their way there while on the run from Nilfgaard. After being shot by one of the Dryads, Dara is healed and made to drink the waters of Broccolin, which will kill anyone with evil intent toward the forest. For those pure of heart, drinking the waters will help them numb their pain and eventually forget their troubles. Dara is happy with Broccolon and wishes to stay, but after Ciri is forced to leave, he follows her out of Broccolon, so it makes sense and want to return. In the season's eighth episode, Taseya, unable to cope with the loss of Aratusa and wrapped with guilt, sadly chooses to take her own life. Not only is Taseya one of the most important characters to die so far on The Witcher, but her death also has a major impact on Yennefer, who views her teacher and mentor like a mother. Losing Taseya is also a major blow to the remaining sorceresses, but it also helps unite them in a common cause. Taseya's death scene fittingly includes several callbacks to the beginning of her relationship with Yennefer, whom she addresses in her final letter. She refers to Yennefer as Piglet, a nickname that she used for the young sorceress back when she was a student at Aratusa, and has rarely used since. She also writes, referring to one of her early lessons for Yen, Sometimes a flower is just a flower, and the best thing it can do for us is die. She also takes her life by slashing her wrist, the same fate from which she saved Yennefer years earlier. It takes time for Yennefer to visit Geralt in Broccolon Forest after he's injured fighting Vilgefort. Once she does arrive, their scene together is very sweet. She apologizes for not visiting him earlier, and brings the bad news that she wasn't able to recover Ciri. Geralt acknowledges that Yennefer must leave to help the remaining sorceresses and that it is his job to recover Ciri. At the end of their conversation, Yennefer says, Tell me this is the last time I'll see you. This may be a nod to the behind the scenes issues rather than fiction. With several seasons to go, Geralt and Yennefer will undoubtedly see each other again, but it is the last time Anya Chalotra and Henry Cavill will share the screen as these characters. When they next meet, Geralt will be played by actor Liam Hemsworth who is taking up the mantle of Geralt of Rivia following Henry Cavill's departure from the show. Henry Cavill's final scene as Geralt is certainly a memorable one. As he and Yaskia look to sneak past the Nilfgaardian checkpoint, Geralt offers an expensive pendant as a bribe to a guard. Yaskia tells him not to give it up, knowing how much it means to him, but Geralt lets it go anyway. The Nilfgaardian soldier lets him through, but Geralt turns back after seeing a group of elves in trouble. He slays all of the soldiers but one. While he no longer needs the bribe to get past the checkpoint, he still chooses to leave the pendant. That pendant belonged to Renfri, a princess Geralt fell in love with in the series' first episode. He eventually had to kill Renfri to save the town, and he never forgave himself for her death. He held onto her pendant as a reminder of his feelings, 
as well as his own perceived failure to save her. Giving up the pendant and willfully leaving it behind shows that Geralt has finally moved on. It's a perfect link from Henry Cavill's first episode to his last, and maybe a nod to a Geralt entering a new chapter of his life. The phrase never lost, always found is one that viewers will hear quite a few times throughout the third season of The Witcher. The in-universe explanation has to do with Ciri's talisman, which Jennifer uses to place a locator spell that Ciri can deploy to help Geralt find her. Whenever she is lost, she utters the phrase, and Geralt and Yennefer are drawn to her. The phrase, of course, is much more than just some magic words to activate the locator spell. It's more or less the theme of the entire season, and in some ways, the series. While Ciri spent pretty much the entirety of Season 2 by Geralt's side, Season 3 splits the two up far more often. Ciri is regularly separated from Geralt and Yennefer, and often has to use a locator spell to bring them back together. She also mentions to Yennefer that the only thing she really cares about is that the three of them stick together. By the time the season wraps, Ciri has once again been separated from her found family, taking on a foreboding identity. Call me Falca. But Geralt assures Yaskia that he will find Ciri at any cost, showing the audience that the theme of Never Lost Always Found will continue in the seasons to come.